Hey everyone, what's up? It's Amber Pro here, and welcome to the farming tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and show you um, what it does. Alright, as you can see, our farmer level is 1. We have 5 types of each seed. Uh, so let's go ahead and plant some carrot seeds, and as you can see, you can see the uh, growth there. Let's go ahead and plant some cabbage over here. Uh, you can see the percentage of the growth... Uh, growth? What? English, Craig. You can see the percentage of the growth here. And the way the system works is you can actually go out of the map somewhere... Like, you can go off screen or do, like go continue on with the game or whatever you want to do if you have long waiting times. And it'll still process even if you're outside of the map. So, as you can see, we just got some cabbage here. But what happens when we level our farming level up? You remember how long that took before, right? <laughs> so, yeah, let's just say like we have this insane farming level, which is 8. Let's uh, plant some seeds here. Look how fast it's growing. Done. So, the higher farming level you have, the faster things grow. So we got some carrots here. So that's going to be really useful for um, in your game if you want to have stuff like wheat, for example, which takes a lot longer to grow normally. But because we have a huge um, farming level, in which I'll show you how much of a difference that makes here soon, the farming level only works after, or like right before you planted the uh, thing. So if you've already planted something and you level your farming level up, it's not going to grow any faster, uh, which kind of makes sense. You can change that if you want to. It's up to you. Um, but let's see, our farming level is 9, so we plant one wheat here, let's see it's growing, level up more, plant another wheat, 12% already, 65, oh that one looks like it's going, that one's going to win, no maybe it won't, anyway as you can see, um, it really, yeah, makes a big difference, and as you can see, we, uh, we're getting tons of stuff here, we have 60 wheat now, um, <laughs> and let's go ahead and plant the last thing, which is, oops, an eggplant. Plant an eggplant. Got a cabbage. Got a got a cabbage. But as you can see, um, planting, like leveling your stuff up, really freaking helps a lot. There you go. So um, this is how this is how it works. Whew. Prepare yourselves, guys. This is going to be a while. Not really, it's just not, it's not that complicated. So you want to make variables. So we're going to go into control variables um, to make these variables. So go to control variables and set up... We're just try setting up one or two for now, like I did. And you can kind of get the hang of it, and then you can progress from there if you wish to. So you're going to want to wanna make a variable called crop timer, and then identify it by a number, like which crop it is. Um, in this case, one. You're going to want to make crop type to determine which type of crop it is. You want to make grow speed, your your want to make, yeah. You want to make grow speed amount, which is how much you gain from picking the item up. Which, by the way, you can set it to a random, so sometimes you can get whatever if you want to. It's up to you. And the completion time, how long it takes to complete. You do, the, do this for every single one. As you can see, I have two crops only available, so I have two sets of these different types of variables. It'd be really cool if RPG Maker came with a struct system. That'd be amazing. Uh, anyways, you also want to make us. Uh, you want to make three more variables called seed checker, percent checker, and farmer level. And you want to make four more vari. Well, you want to make as many variables as you're, you're required for your seeds as well. So you want to do carrot seeds. This is for the display, um, the text thing at the start. Cabbage seeds, eggplant seeds, and wheat seeds. So once you're done making all those variables. You then want to make a couple of switches. These switches are going to be, well, three, three switches per crop. Uh, planted, complete, and active. Active is going to be very, very handy because the common event will only process while this is on. Alright, so once you're done making all those, you're going to want to control variables. You're going to want to control uh, crop grow speed. Um, for the first crop, we're going to set 1. As you can see, crop grow speed 1. You're going to set it equal to the farmer's level. Uh, carrot seeds, you're going to set equal to the number of seeds. The number of... Okay, you're going to go game data, and you're going to do carrot seeds. Or whatever other things you have. And do the same thing for all the other seeds you have. Uh, with different variables, as you can see. I have 20, 21, 22, 23. Make sure you name the variables the same name as the seeds to kind of help organize things. Next, you can have your little text event. I'm not really going to explain this. Um, you can just see how it kind of works. Slash V displays the variable number. And then I have like a different text effects and all that. Then I have show choices. Place carrot seeds, cabbage, and whatnot. Then inside of that, we control this. Okay, we type 
we put seed checker to number of carrot seeds. Or, if you don't want to use seed checker, you could just use the variable carrot seeds. If it's greater than um, greater than zero, you can do it here. But what I did, I just did seed checker, and I am I set it equal to the amount of carrot seeds per ch based on the choice. We selected carrot seeds, so we're setting it to carrot seeds. Then you want to do a conditional branch to check and see if seed checker is greater than zero. You can do a conditional branch, just select here. And if so, you take away one of the items and you want to set crop active one equals on. You want to turn that switch on, crop active one. One being the crop again, guys. Uh, when you make a new crop, you're going to want to change all this stuff. You're going to want to set it to two, three, four, whatever, however many you have. I'll show you the second event later. You want to set the type. Our carrots are type 2. Um, if you go over here, you can see carrots. These are type 2. We'll get into this later, but just set any whatever you want, 0. But make sure uh, each one is different. Each choice is different. Um, you want to do the amount, crop amount 1. This will be the amount that you get after picking them up. And you want to set the completion time. These are in frames. To calculate your frames, all you have to do is type, let's say, let's say you want it to be five seconds by default. Of course, minus your, you know, or divided by your farmer level. Anyway, so you want it to be five seconds. Sixty times five. Three hundred frames is five seconds. There you go. So you would do, you would do three hundred for five seconds. So that's how you would do that math. And then you, would, you want to turn the switch called crop planted one on. You want to copy this and do the same thing for each and other... Uh, each of your other choices. Uh, you obviously want to change this variable right here uh, to set it equal to the number of seeds that you have based on your choice. And then conditional branch and whatnot. Alright, so next you want to make a new um, event tab or new event page by clicking here. You want to make sure this is selected as switch in the conditions and you want to select crop planted one. You want to give it a uh, graphic. I gave it the tile set graphic here. Uh, matter of fact, I gave them all that kind of thing. Alright, um, and then we want to control... Very Okay, we want to do control variables. We want to control the percent checker uh, right here. And we want to set it equal to crop 1's timer. Or, again, you want to change 1 to whatever crop you're on. This is the first one, so I'm going to put this 1. Next, you want to multiply that by 100. So you want to do control variables, you want to click MUL for multiply, type 100. Make sure you're also on percent checker still. And then you want to divide percent checker by selecting DIV by the completion time required. For, uh, for one, or again, whatever else you're on. And then you have, a, you have a conditional branch to check what type it is. So if it's equal to zero, then it's cabbage. If it's equal to one, um, you know, your whatever type you selected earlier, then it's eggplant. Play around with this if you can't get it to work right. Or, what you could do is just have the percentage displayed. To display the percentage, as you can see, our ID for the percentage checker is 13, so do slash V13. Uh, if you can't get the names to work right, then just delete all the conditional branches and make a text event with just the slash V, and you can just uh, have a basic percentage display. So on the third tab, we have if we have okay, in the conditions we have a switch checked and crop complete one. We also have a variable um, crop type zero. Uh, if it's greater than or equal to zero, then it's going to be a cabbage. If it's greater than or equal to one, it's going to be an eggplant. If it's greater than or equal to two, it's going to be carrots. And if it's greater than or equal to three, it's going to be wheat. And as you can see over here, we set these types here. See, carrots were number two in our event over, th over here. See, we select number two, so therefore we turn the type into two for carrots. Sorry if this sounds confusing. Um, I, am, I do apologize. I'm trying to explain this the best way I know how. And, um, but yeah, so what you want to do now is you know just make some text, say you got the item, and then you want to control items. You want to increase it by crop amount one uh, variable. Then you want to turn crop complete one off on the switches, control switches to do this, and turn plants it off, and set the variable timer to zero, the crop timer one, but again, it changes based on what crop you're on, 
and then turn active one off. Go ahead and click OK and go into your database. Go to con uh, go to common events. Okay, name this crop one or whatever ID, but you want to make you want to make us um, however many crops you have. You want to make an, a common event per crop. This is a very simple setup though, so no worries. Name it uh, as usual. Crop one, crop two, as you can see over here. Make the trigger parallel, and for crop one, turn on uh, click the switch and then select crop active one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a conditional branch. We're going to check if crop complete one is off, then meaning if it's not complete yet, if you activated it, like if you've planted it, um, and if it's not complete, it adds crop timer one by the grow speed one, as you can see here. Um, that's because what that does is that allows you to... Okay, once you've set the grow speed, um, then, yeah. That, um, I, I've noticed a small bug that you guys have probably already noticed. <laughs> um, if you have, good, you know how to fix it. If not, I will go ahead and show you at the end of this. Uh, and then we have another conditional branch. We're going to do crop timer one. We're going to check, um, excuse me, <laughs> I just had a brain fart. Okay. We're going to have another conditional branch. We're going to check um, if crop timer 1 is greater than or equal to crop completion time number 1. Then, get out of here. <laughs> you can also have all these in a single common event, but then... No, you can't. Never mind. I'm just derping again. Sorry. Okay, so anyways, after that, we're going to do... We're going to turn crop complete on. Again, the ID. This is number 1, so we're having 1. Um, crop planted one we're going to turn off, and active we're going to turn off. Again, do this for each one. As you can see, the numbers change from one to two for each thing. So you're going to want to do this for each and every crop you have. And that's it. I will show you the second one. As you can see, we kind of just changed some of the variables. Uh, seed checker. The bug, there's no, there's nothing really uh, big to worry about. As, as you can see, we're, um... Oh, no, never mind. There's, there's not a bug. Yeah, that's right, because we... We only set it equal to the farm level once it's uh, not planted. Good. So never mind. There is no bugs. Take what I said back. <laughs> but as you can see, we changed um, type 1 to type 2. You're going to want to do this, again, for each and every single uh, one. You're, you're probably going to run into bugs because you're probably going to forget to... Uh, you're probably going to forget to switch one of these uh, out for the newest one. The variables, like you're probably going to forget to change it from 1 to 2 or, or from whatever. But that's really all it takes. <laughs> um, I apologize for the unedited video. But, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as you can see, I have one seed each. Okay, place this seed carrot. Yay! But that's all it takes. And there you go. I'll see you guys later. Thank you all so very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this and I hope this all helped. Uh, what? I hope this helped everyone. See you guys!